Right. Some bad news on the development front. One of the parts failed quality control. We know how to fix it, but it'll take some extra resource. It's on hold for now, but you can order the extra work from the laptop at any time. What's up guys, welcome back to the Cyber Career Mode part number 10. And as you heard from Chris, unfortunately, the upgrade that we purchased at the Austrian Grand Prix has failed. So, which means it's not on the car, and it means we're going to have to uh, spend some more resource points in uh, redeploying and redeveloping that uh, upgrade. So what I'm going to do is actually going to cut away to practice, try and get as many resource points as we can. And then, depending on what the uh, overall total we've got afterwards, we may end up... Uh, Re uh, oh, redeveloping this particular part or trying for another part, but uh, without further ado, let's get into practice. Welcome to Silverstone, home of Formula One racing in Great Britain, where shortly we're expecting the cars to appear for today's practice session. Anthony Davidson, you've driven this circuit more than a few times in your career, and you've been around long enough to remember the pre wing layout as well. But how do you like Silverstone in its current guise? Well, the old circuit was a lot of fun, of course, but I do like the current layout. The reprofiled Abbey is faster than it used to be, and I always felt it was missing a sort of slow technical section. And now the corners up at Village and the Loop gives us that. So, yeah, I'm a fan, and uh, on top of that, I think it's created some more overtaken opportunities. All right, here we are in practice one for our first practice session around our home Grand Prix. And in practice one, Today, I decided to actually uh, do four out of the five practice programs, mainly because of the fact that the uh, weather on the next two practice sessions wasn't going to be that great. So I thought I'd save that up for the, the fuel saving uh, practice program, mainly because it's a little bit easier then to save fuel in the wet than it is in the dry. But uh, anyways, we're now coming through the uh, in through Luffield now and I'm heading up to what the uh, original start finish straight was, going past the, the grandstands as we head up through Woodcut and heading up towards Cops Corner. We were able to smash the track acclimatisation, nearly lost the word there. Um, we, managed to we managed to get the maximum number of resource points available in that, but then as we now move into the tyre wear test, heading through the Maggots and Beckett's complex is quite challenging to get this right. This time around we were able to do it on our opening lap. We've got also a bit of traffic behind us. I think it's a Mercedes. Yes it is, it's the Mercedes of Bottas. I was hoping it's going to be Hamilton because it's obviously his home Grand Prix as well. As we now come across the line to finish the lap and we managed to get the purple score in this particular program as well which is excellent we then moved on into the uh, qualifying program and as you can see based off the engine wear we might be in a little bit trouble in terms of the uh, the power performance with this particular practice program because of uh, obviously when you uh, have a worn engine then you're down on power especially down the straights and there's a quite a few uh, good straights around this particular circuit so I'm hoping that isn't going to cost us too much in terms of uh, lap times we now head up through the last few corners ready to come across the line to see what sort of time we do on our opening lap and actually that time was good enough to actually get the uh, maximum possible score get, getting a purple lap time on the board and we're able to get the maximum number of resource points available from that we then moved on into the race strategy pretty much straight away we're heading up towards the uh, end of practice one already mainly because of the fact that uh, we've done the three we've already done three practice programs already I think also the fact that we've managed to um, get those practice session or the other two, the past two practice sessions done relatively quickly because of how quick we were and also how good we were to the tyres so that was uh, excellent it meant that we had a little bit more time to actually fit in this uh, race track so we go a little bit wide into uh, Cops Corner but as you can see we're actually going to get the uh, maximum resource points available in this particular practice program as well we then move on into practice two and as you can see it's a complete contrast in terms of the weather it's classic your classic British weather here as we head through uh, uh, after the Wellington Strait as you can see the uh, we've changed out a couple of the engine components as well just to uh, freshened up the engine a little bit I think that uh, the part that was uh, in the orange zone I think was starting to struggle a little bit and I didn't really want it uh, failing on us as we now come through the final few corners to end oh, our second lap because as you can see we weren't able to get the maximum uh, amount of fuel saving available for this before um, the first lap but we were able to do it on the second lap and that was a perfect 5 out of 5 when it comes to the uh, practice programs and getting the maximum number of resource points available and also we managed to get all the team objectives as well on top of that so what I decided to do was try and is to repurchase the uh, failed upgrade that we were, were meant to get for Silverstone as you saw earlier what, from the conversation we had with Chris right at the start of the episode that failed and we, so we're going to repurchase this and hopefully it will be on the car ready for Hungary especially as the fact that uh, it's a high downforce circuit and of course our car 
isn't one, isn't one of the strongest in terms of the uh, downforce uh, side of things, unless it's in the wet. I think, based off what we saw in Austria, I think we have a reasonably good pa good pace, and the aero doesn't really ha the power on the aero doesn't really affect it too much. So uh, I'm hoping we can get that on the car ready for Hungary, so we'll be a little bit more competitive around there in the dry. So without further ado, let's get into qualifying. Welcome to this afternoon's qualifying session here at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. Looking at this field today, Ants, do you think we're going to see anyone take a chance, maybe run the harder of the available compounds and save some of the grippy tyres for the race tomorrow? Well, I'd be surprised in all honesty. It's only the front runners that really have the pace to get away with that. And even then, at the end of the day, it's a big risk. Track position is the most important thing, and it's rarely worth sacrificing for a slightly more optimal strategy in the race, so I doubt we're going to see anyone trying it. I have been wrong before, though. We certainly do see some risky decisions every now and then, and it's a gamble that's sometimes worth taking. But if it were me in the car, I would want to be on the fastest tyre for my qualifying lap, without a doubt. OK, here we are in Q1, ready to start our opening lap around the Silverstone circuit. It's going to be really interesting to see where we are in terms of performance, mainly because of the fact that uh, we had a pretty good qual have had good qualifying the last couple of Grand Prix, but this is a very uh, high downforce and also uh, power track, so it might, we might struggle in terms of overall performance as we now come through the Magnus and Beckett's complex. So a massive improvement through that particular sector, because in the first lap we were pretty poor through that particular area, so I'm hoping we can improve on our current position. As you can see, we're currently sitting in P10, we move up into P9 though, ahead of Alonso. But that unfortunately then becomes a, a, a position near the back of the field. As you can see, we're now in 17th place. We're trying to improve on our final flying lap. This is going to be our only last, our last run in FP1. Let's just have to wait and see if we can uh, get the better of Jolie and Palmer here, or if we can possibly get into uh, Q2. I very much doubt it as we now head over, about to uh, come across the line right now. It is still only p17 unfortunately and that means we're out of out in q1 for the first time since i think monaco from what i, from what I recall but i'm not 100 percent sure i think it was monaco but uh, i don't really uh remember off the top of my head but uh yeah disappointing result but i'm um, hoping we can uh, have a uh, a better performance in the race so without further ado let's get into that with me today is a man who's no stranger to the thrills of silverstone he's a past winner here in sports cars of course it's our good friend, Anthony Davidson. You seem particularly excited for this one, Ant. Is there something you want to tell me? Oh, just looking forward to it, Crofty. It's always a very special atmosphere. And also, I started karting in the late 1980s, and I was here for that epic race in 1986 with Mansell and Piquet fighting each other right here in my home Grand Prix. So coming back to Silverstone always means a lot. And looking at the crowd today, it's clear that none of that spirit has been lost. And also, we just have such a fantastic field this year. Some very close competition and conditions that should make for some great racing. I can't wait. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Sainz, Hülkenberg, Raikkonen, Hamilton, and Felipe Massa, Kvyat, Grosjean, Esteban Ocon, and Magnussen, Stroll, Palmer, Asalba, and Fernando Alonso. Verline and Stoffel van Dorn completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Let, let's get into the race strategy for our first home Grand Prix of the uh, the career mode. But anyways, we're now in the strategy screen we're going to go start off the on the uh, soft compound tire before moving on to the super softs now i remember last year i had some real problems with the uh, the tire wear around this particular circuit so i'm not entirely convinced the one stop's going to work but i'm going to go for it anyways mainly because of the fact that i think we can nurse the tires a lot better than what we did in uh, previous games where i was pretty much just taking so much out of the tires on the opening lap to try and get as many positions as possible but then completely screwing myself over later on in the race so matured a little bit in uh, as the uh, games have progressed so I'm hoping uh, we can have a better race this time around compared to what we've had 
in the past. But anyways, let's get into, as we're now in the formation lap, objective as always is try and gain as many positions as we can. I'm not sure if we're able to score points today, but we'll have to see how our pace is on the super soft tyres. We now come to the end of the formation lap, very, getting very close to the back of Jolie and Palmer as we come towards the uh, start grid se starting grid sequence. Lights out and away we go and it's an okay-ish start off the line. We were just about cut across the path of both McLaren to ensure we don't lose position. Looks like though Verline might have a go at us round the outside on the uh, same compound tyres as us. So it looks like he's got a similar strategy up his sleeve as we do. As we now go up the inside of several drivers in that includes both Haas cars and also Williams has now come and uh, gets try to go side by side with the Williams I think of Massa. As we now head up towards the Wellington straight where the... Uh, the legs, the extra legs of the Mercedes-powered Williams will now start pulling away from us. Although we're actually keeping close tabs on him as we head up towards the uh, the end of the uh, what would be the uh, the first DRS, DRS straight. DRS not in operation, obviously, in the uh, on the first two laps. We now head through left field. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a poor exit, and Mass is now able to pull out a little bit of an advantage over us as we head head up towards down the uh, old start finish straight. As we now come on to lap two, nothing really much else happened on lap one. But as you can see in front, Mass is having a go. Up the inside of the Toro Rosso of Kvyat into Stow Corners. We now head up towards Club to close lap two. Unfortunately, I misjudged the braking and very nearly run into the back of Kvyat and had to uh, cut to a little bit to the grass. And unfortunately, got a little bit of a uh, warning for exceeding track limits right there. But that was mainly because of my initial mistake of not of misjudging the braking as we now start lap number three. We're now going to cut to the end of uh, lap number four, actually, as we now head up towards the uh, Stow Corner. We're in the DRS zone. Of Kvyat trying to go up the inside of the Toro Rosso into Stone Corner. But it looks like Kvyat's going to be just ahead of us as we uh, head through the next part of the, uh, of the lap. As we now come up towards Club Corner. He's just managed, managed to fend us off just for now. We were able to get up the inside of him into Club Corner. Then hold it round the outside into the final couple of corners. As we come towards the end of lap 4 and start lap 5. Up into P12. Now up next is Nico Hulkenberg. But I very much doubt we'll be able to stay with him as the, uh, the race progresses. But as you can see, we're actually pretty close to him on uh, lap number six, but we have a little bit of a poor exit as we head on down the old start finish straight. And Magnussen has a run on us as we head up towards Cops, and it's gone up the inside of us. The Haas driver making a very good move, and then also doing a small brake test on the exit of the corner, which is allowing Kvyat to possibly overtake us into the Maggots and Beckett's complex. He gets alongside us right there, but we're able to just fend him off into the uh, the next the co the, the combination of the Maggots and Beckett's corners. We now head up towards Stowe again. We're in the DRS zone of Magnussen in front, so that's the reason why we've got DRS in operation. That means we're going to be able to uh, fend off Kvyat for now, but it looks like our, uh, our pace has suddenly dropped off a little bit all of a sudden. I have no idea why. Mainly, I don't, mainly I don't know really why it has done so, considering the fact that uh, everyone else around us is on the, uh, the super soft tyres, and therefore they should be worn out more. But anyways, we're having to defend against uh, Kvyat through uh, Brooklyn, and as we now head up towards the old start finish straight, again we're able to fend him off. We now cut on towards the end of lap 7 to start lap, lap 8. So start setting our best lap of the race. Kvyat trying to go up the inside into the first corner. Very close to contact between ourselves and the torpedo. But uh, we're able to uh, fend him off. And he's dropped back considerably after that. But it looks like we've also got a, a slow car in front of us. I'm not sure on that. But yeah, there is a slow car. And it is the Haas of Magnussen. And he must have got some sort of puncture or something. But... Uh, He's in a bit of a world of trouble, and we're able to take that position back that we lost to him earlier. And that's going to cause a virtual safety car to be deployed, so at least allows us to save a little bit of fuel as we now come through the uh, the start of the middle sector. And anyways, let's have a look on board and see what ha actually happened to Magnussen. Just coming through the last corner, and yes, yeah, there you can see a front right puncture has been caused. He actually gets hit by Nico Hogberg, who he passed, I think, the previous lap, and was now starting to pull away from him. But then Hulk, but the way he uh, parts the exit there meant that uh, Hulkenberg picked up some front wing damage. So uh, he's going to be compromised now as the uh, as we come towards the end of the virtual safety car. Hulkenberg's actually coming into the pits as we come to the end of lap eight. Mainly, I don't know whether it was his pit stop lap or it's because of his um, front wing damage. Because there is another car that is currently in the pits right now. So not sure whether they decide to just make the quick decision to just pit him now because of the uh, the, pit, the damage and minimise the. Uh, amount of uh, track time that they lose. We now come towards 
the middle of uh, Magnuson Betting. So he's got the yellow flag again in play. I think that's Magnuson. Still trying to make his way around towards the end of the lap. But there's a car, a Ferrari, I think, in the uh, stranded in the middle of the track right there. And I think that was Sebastian Vettel. And he was leading the race. So he is officially out of the race, which is absolutely insane. The race leader was taken out by Kevin Magnussen, just completely moving back on towards the inside. I think maybe Vettel could have probably slowed down a little bit in that corner as well to try and avoid uh, making contact with the house. But again, the AI with uh, punctures is causing all sorts of carnage with its with other AI drivers. We now battle Kimi Raikkonen as he comes out of the pits right here. I thought, let's have a little uh, scrap with Raikkonen as we now head up towards the Wellington straight. We have got the DRS on him. Yes, he's got fresher tyres, but Let's just see, let's have a little bit of fun. Maybe the opportunity, the only opportunity for us to actually overtake a Ferrari legitimately rather than them having a penalty or retirement. We've now got the inside of the fin, but he's going to have the inside line for Luffield as we head up towards the, the old start finish straight once again. But he's able to uh, fend us off and that's the end of our small challenge that we had on the, uh, the Ferrari. It was a little bit of fun that we thought, I thought we'd have. But anyways, now we're on to lap 11 and the, uh, the fun hasn't officially stopped for us as we've now getting overtaken by the Red Bull of Max Verstappen as he goes up the inside prior to, to, at, right at the start of the second sector. He's on fresher super softs. We're on worn softs. It was a slam dunk really as to as to whether we were going to actually uh, defend him off. So I thought, let's just let him through and uh, to, just let him get on with his race and I'll get on with my race. We've now got a couple more laps to go as we uh, try and just set as best laps as we possibly can towards the end of our pit stopper, uh, towards the end of our first stint and also our uh, pit stop window as we now come through uh, the next couple of corners. We're now on to lap number 16 and we've now got the other Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo just behind us. He's, now, he's on the medium tyre so looks like it's a split strategy from Red Bull's perspective but we'll have to wait and see who out of those two uh, drivers ends up being the fastest overall. As Ricciardo goes up the inside in the same spot that Verstappen was able to overtake us and again didn't really want to fight too hard to be honest. It's just the fact that uh, they're going to be so much faster than us overall in terms of their car performance. And we are really on the edge when it comes to a tyre performance. We're now coming into the pits for our only pit stop of, of the day. And I'm speeding up the entry here because it's a very long entry at this particular circuit. But let's hope we don't lose too much time with this pit stop. And we can uh, rejoin a very uh, respectable position. And also then start pushing on these super soft tyres. And it's a reasonable-ish pit stop. I mean, it's not the greatest, but at the same time, we didn't lose too, any mu too much time. And also the fact that uh, we didn't get held up by anybody, considering what happened in the last race where we were being held up left, right and centre. And also the fact that uh, VLM pitted, oh, I think, a, a black previously and completely screwed us out of a, a one-point position against uh, the man that's actually now in front of us, Felipe Massa. But anyways, we've rejoined in 12th place, which is the uh, same position that we were roughly in when prior to uh, the pit stop pits of windows opening for the guys on the super soft tyres. We now come towards the uh, end of lap 17. We're getting uh, a little bit held up by Kvyat. I think he was just the fact that he got held up by Massa overtaking. We're now going to go up the inside of the Russian in the same spot that we overtook him earlier on in the race. So it looks like he managed to get his it via an undercut, but we're able to get the, uh, the position back. A little bit more clumsily though compared to what we did manage last time. There was a little bit of contact between myself and Kvyat, which was a shame. Let's have a look at ball of the replay on his perspective. He does give us the room on the inside into club corner but we don't give him we squeeze him out a bit too much and that was the result of the contact and I will take I'll hold my hands up and say yep I didn't give it enough space fortunately though no penalty was given so we move on let's get we're now coming closing on in on the back of Felipe Massa we're actually managed to stick with him despite him having superior straight line speed considering what happened in the last race but look he's going defensive into club corner I think it was a bit too defensive right there because mainly because I wasn't too I wasn't close enough to him to actually warrant making an overtake so that's a little bit I don't know a little bit poor tactics from uh, the Williams right there as we now come through and start come towards the uh, the end of sector two of lap number 20 we're in the DRS range of the Williams as we now head up towards Stoke Corner can we make a move up the inside of the Brazilian who has just recently retired in real life as we go on board the nose cam of the Williams look how close we are to his uh, his left my left front tire to his a front wing end plate and we were able to make the manoeuvre stick round the outside prior to uh, club corner and we were able to take that position away from the Williams which was uh, absolutely fantastic although I would expect him to start coming back towards us once our superstars start to wear out a bit as you can see Massa again on, uh, or Massa on lap 22 trying to get his revenge and he's trying to go around the outside of us into uh, 
Brooklyn, but we're able to uh, fend him off right there, which was absolutely fantastic. As uh, drivers in front are setting fast to slaps galore, so uh, shame we're not on that sort of pace. But anyways, we're now coming up towards the end of lap number 23. We've got a yellow flag that's in play again, though, so it must be either a driver's got a puncture or got some sort, some sort of problem or is out of the race, but it looks like it's a driver with a puncture and it's a Force India. Not sure which one it is at the moment, but we are going to go on board with a replay to see which particular Force India was affected. We get on a little bit on the grass right there because I got a little bit uh, distracted by the fact that we um, managed to gain another position. But anyways, this is the Force India. I think it's Perez and it's a left rear puncture this time. And actually, that's a disaster for Force India because look who is behind him. I think that is Esteban O'Connor that's run into the back of his teammate. Oh my goodness me, the what's the uh, Force India clashes that happened in real life have now translated into the game. So unfortunately for them, they're going to be in real, real trouble. We've now gone board with Jolian Palmer and he gets completely taken out by uh, not seeing uh, the, 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 the slow Force India. I think that was Perez with the, uh, the puncture and he is now out of the race. Don't know what Palmer was doing, just accelerating straight to the corner when he could clearly see that there was a force, slow Force India right there. But again, the AI... Not really getting off the racing line at the moment with regards to uh, these sort of instances or pulling off the track completely with regards to uh, getting punctures. Anyways, we're, we're in a little more, bit more of a battle with Massa now as we've now moved up into a ninth place. And also it will become an eighth place because Ocon is now making his uh, an extra pit stop due to the fact that he's had to replace his front wing. So we're now up into eighth. Grosjean is seventh. He's a bit too far up the road for us. So we're really in a dogfight between ourselves and Massa just like we were in Austria, but Massa's managed to make the manoeuvre round the outside of us into Brooklyn. So we were able to get the inside line and then get, get onto the right hand side of the track so that we can get the inside line for Luffield. So we're able to maintain position for now. As we now come through Cops Corner, we've got Perez still trying to make his way back to the pit. That's Grosjean in front who actually got held up massively by the Force India. So again, more in consideration from the uh, the stricken AI. So. Uh, we getting clo we got close to Grosjean, but and we actually get DRS because of the uh, the fact that Grosjean was so close to us. But that's that's mainly going to this not for attacking. It's mainly for defence from Massa. As you can see, Massa's trying to go around the outside of us into Stoke. We're going to go side by side, but he doesn't m risk the manoeuvre and we're able to uh, fend him off again. And we've now come towards the final few corners to end the race. It looks like Perez is about to cross across the line to uh, end the race. It looks like he decided not to even make a pit stop, which was for some stupid reason. Anyway, so we're coming, coming across the line now, and it's a pretty good eighth place. Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. That was a fantastic drive. Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. And after this round of the World Championship, Here's how things look in the driver's table. It's a good result for Kimi Raikkonen, who extends his advantage at the top of the championship. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? From my point of view, it would have to be the Sauber driver. Look at where they finished compared to where they started. It's not easy to cut through the field like that in Formula 1, so it was a great effort. On to the constructors then. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, Toro Rosso's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. So confirmation of the results, it's another finish 1-2 with Raikkonen profiting for the fact that his teammate is out of the race. Bottas was second. Hamilton in his home Grand Prix was third. So unfortunately, he was unable to extend his streak that he was on with winning this British Grand Prix. The two Red Bulls of Ricardo and Verstappen were fourth and fifth, so Ricardo got the better of his teammate in that uh, strategy battle. Carlos Sainz in an impressive sixth place for Toro Rosso. Grosjean in seventh, ourselves in eighth. Massa ninth and Kvyat in tenth, so a double point score for Toro Rosso, which is going to allow them to uh, close the gap and possibly close the gap towards our sort of uh, area of, in terms of the, the championship, in terms of the Constructors' Championship. We'll, have, we'll look at, have a look at that in a minute, but this is what the drivers looks like. Raikkonen continuing to lead the way. Bottas is now second following Vettel's retirement. This is just looking a little bit further down 
to see what the overall uh, standings are. As you can see, quite a three drivers still yet to score at the moment. But yes, you can see Raikkonen is now first with Bottas now in second in front of his teammate. Two Red Bulls still occupying fourth, or fifth and sixth. Perez in seventh, myself in eighth. Massa in ninth and Ocon in tenth. And then if we look at the Constructors' Championship, Haas's result against us, or oh, Grosjean finishing seventh has allowed Haas to move into fifth ahead of us, whilst Toros' double point score has allowed them to move in front of Williams. So as you can see, what I've just mentioned, that Toros are in this, this little fight here for fifth place. It could be a really close fight towards the end of the, or in the second half of the year between ourselves, Haas, Toroso, and Williams. Although Williams have been very disappointing so far this season. It's a real shame that they're not scoring as much as what they expect, what they're expected to. So that's the reason why this gap, this battle is a lot closer than, it's, uh, than intended. The fact that Force India and Red Bull are also so far in front in terms of um, performance, that's the reason why they're in their lone positions of uh, third and fourth respectively. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the race. And we actually got a little cutscene that we're going to end off with, which is to do with the uh, driver contracts. team a few weeks ago. Well, things have moved on since then. These are the offers I've managed to put together for you. You don't have to do anything with them, but let me know what you think. Alright, thanks very much Emma. Let's have a look and see what sort of offers are on the table as of right now. It's not really going really to affect my decision too much because I decided to actually stay with Salva for at least one season and also I want to try and get them into that, at least that midfield battle and potentially winning, competing for championships. So at the moment I don't really want to move to McLaren Honda because they're our nearest rivals and also I think Haas or Haas and Renault or Haas is quite tempting but at the same time I want to try and get Sauber into that uh, midfield group such that they can then uh, compete very on regular basis points without me. So without further ado, that's going to be the end of the episode. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all for episode 11, which will be the Hungarian Grand Prix. So until then, see you later.